And welcome to another episode of the Ask Geeks podcast. Uh, you know, are we really a podcast at this point? Anyways, I'm your host, Adrian, and welcome to another episode of Weeb Wednesday on a Wednesday. So we're going to get back to this series. We're going to bring eight straight weeks of anime episodes. Just to give a heads up, we're not going to look at anime such as The Eminence of the Shadow, My Hero, Blue Lock, Things like that, ones that are transferring over from last season. We're not going to give you those reviews because we've already we already covered them last um, season. And we want to save some of those spots for the anime coming up and the new anime and some of the anime returning. There's one more anime that's popular that we're not going to review. And that would be The Fruit of Evolution 2. Before I knew it, my life had been made. Um, I had already given that one a previous review earlier too. I reviewed season one. And honestly, I don't know how this one got a season two because I did not enjoy it. It was not good to me. A lot of the people I've spoke with in the community and the discourse and such aren't really fans of this show either. So I'm like, but obviously there's a fan base for it. However, since I personally didn't enjoy it myself, I can't see myself trying to finish up through season one and then going and watching season two. So because of that, I will not be partaking in this anime, and this anime will not get a review as well. Okay, and without further ado, the first anime we're going to speak on is The Misfit of Demon King Academy 2. This is the stereotypical anime where you have the action, the fantasy, the magic, the demons, everything such like that. So we're following our main character, Anos, and he's coming from the past. He he died in his previous life as the Demon King. He gets reincarnated in his same exact world, but into the future. Magic has gotten weaker, and a lot of the magic is outdated. However, he's still overpowered and strong because nobody uses those lost arts anymore. So you're just going to be following his school art. We saw season one season one was solid and now we're moving on to season two next up we have is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon for i believe part two so this this has been going on a long time and i'm very interested to see how this goes i have to re-catch up because i did not watch um season four part one but seasons one through three have been amazing we're watching our one of our best boys, Bell, go through and try to, you know, make it in this world. He's, you know, he's, oh, he's gonna eventually be overpowered. It's showing hints here and there, and we're just gonna continue to see how this one goes. Third is one I didn't watch for season one, and it is I don't want to get hurt, so I max out all my defense. Part two, so season two should be similar to season one. So we have a, you have our main girl who has never played an MMO before. And so because this is her first MMO, she does not want to get hurt. So she's like, this is my first MMORPG. I am not going to get hurt. I don't want to sit here and get take damage. That hurts. So she just maxed out all her defensive stats and her health stats so that she never takes any kind of damage and she never feels pain. So 
she becomes known as this super tanky girl and it's just a comedy it's hilarious and i just can't wait to check this one out i wanted to check this one out back in season one but i just never had time to y'all know how it is when you have so many anime to watch some just get lost and uh you know get lost so this is one i'm excited to get back to Next up is Vinland Saga Season 2. Vinland Saga is one that was popular and was getting so much traction when Season 1 came out. This one, just like I don't want to get hurt, so I maxed out all my stats, I didn't get a chance to watch. But you best believe I will be tuning into Season 2. The studio's map, so you already know they're going to be putting great, It's gonna the animation and the quality is going to be great. You can watch it on Netflix, Crunchyroll, or Verve, and you know I will be checking this one out. I can't wait to finally get the catch up on this one and watch it. And then coming up, we have Adventures Who Don't Believe in Humanity Will Save the World. When did we why, when did we get away from super short titles like Naruto, Bleach, One Piece? You know what I'm saying? Hunter, Hunter. Every anime, a lot of these new animes have super long titles that are a mouthful. Anyways, let's get back to it. I just I just was wondering, like, why, why, why all of a sudden all of them have to be so complex to let you know? I guess it's to also let you describe the anime in one, some sort, just to, you know, cause a lot of names are taken nowadays, so you have to show how you're different than every other anime out there. But I just feel like it's a little extra. But we have... We, we, so basically, in the city of the Holy um, Kingdom, there's a melting pot of races and professions, adventurers looking to get rich quick, quick-witted merchants, singing and dancing bars, nobles, holy men, beast folk, and more. The town itself is a labyrinth, and it has been known as the nickname of Labyrinth Town. Pretty, you know, you know, big brain right there. The town has a labyrinth called a Labyrinth Town. Nick, a heartbroken light warrior who is kicked out of the martial arts adventure party, excuse me, and deceived by his lover, is a resident of this city. He's the MC, fed up with everything. He visits the bar and finds out only there's there's only bad food. Adventures living it up and uninteresting table mates. As he drowns his sorrows in lukewarm beer, all of his irritation and discontent burst forward in one declaration. Humans can't be trusted. He thought he was only voicing his frustration, but in reality, the statement came from the voices. And then you're going to see where the voices come from. The, this begins the adventure of four people who carry their own scars. This one seems to be interesting. So you have... You have four characters or five characters um, who all don't trust humanity anymore. And they're all setting out on an adventure without with the lack of trust. This should be an interesting one because usually, you know, they you got you got the heroes party, they're banding or the protagonist party, they're banding together, they're all friends, they're all joyous and everything. But this takes a different approach. So I'm I'm interested to see how this one goes. Next, we have one that I've already seen some slander for it, but I feel like I'm going to enjoy it. It's Tomachan is a girl. So you have our main female protagonist, Tomo. She's a tomboy. She's, you know, she's a very boyish high school girl. She wants her childhood friend to see her that her as an actual girl, but every attempt like ends up in vain. And you're basically following the story to see if she can get him to see her feminine side. So they grew, you know, you know the the story. They grow up, they're friends, but she's like, she's one of the guys. She's tough, she's cool, everything like that. And he, but eventually she's like, hey, I'm a girl, and I've start as as time goes on, I start developing feelings, and I'm not. I don't want you to see me as one of the guys anymore. I want you to see me as who I am. I want you to see me as a female, somebody of the opposite sex. So this one should be interesting too. I can't wait to um, watch this. I feel like this is one I'm gonna jump into the manga to see. Um, you know, you're gonna have the her friends cheering her on. You know, it's gonna be a dim with it uh, male protagonist saying like he can't understand. He just doesn't understand. And then hopefully, eventually, they get to that love scene. I haven't done as much research on this one, but trust me, when we give the review to this one, I'm gonna have it all locked in. Next is by the grace of God, season two. This one wonderful loved it loved season one of it it's just a very 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 chill slice of life isekai 
Like you, you're just gonna watch and you're gonna you're gonna be amazed. So basically, our main character he he tamed a bunch of slimes and he tamed a bunch of slimes. And then there's all types of different types of slime. He's some that's good with dirt and cleaning, some that's strong, good for fighting, and all these different slimes they all obey him, which helps him become super strong at one point. But he's a kid and he's just chilling, so it's not a lot of fighting, there's not a lot of action, it's just a chill. Just regular laid back slice of life. And if you want to see a laid back slice of life, East Guy, this one is the one to peep. Next is near Automata version one. I did not play the game. However, one of my friends played the game and he said, as long as they stick to the game, this one should be very, very good. In the distant future, 5012, the sudden aerial invasion of Earth by aliens and their creations led mankind to the brink of extinction. The surviving number of humans who took refuge on the moon to organize a counterattack using android soldiers to recapture Earth. However, there's a war. However, the war reaches a stalemate as the machine life forms continue to multiply. In turn, humanity deploys a new unit of android soldiers as its ultimate weapon. Newly dispatched to the Earth, 2B joins 9S, the analysts currently stationed there, where amid their mission, they encounter um, a mis mysterious phenomena. And that's what this is. It's going to be an action. It's going to be super action packed, sci fi, just all, all fighting, all smoke. And I'm ready to see this because it's based off a game. So it makes sense why it's so action packed. And I want to see how close because it might because usually when i see animes like that are based off a game it makes me want to go try the game and i want to see how close to the game it actually stays next up we have the angel next door spoils me rotten so you have this beautiful girl whose classmates all call her an angel not only is she the star athlete with perfect grades she's the perfect goddess she's also drop dead gorgeous um then you have the main character an average male you know self-admitted slob has never thought much of the divine beauty despite attending the same school everything changes however when he happens to see her sitting alone in the park during a rainstorm thus begins the strange relationship between the incredibly unlikely pair i like these too i like where you see the loner loser guy and the beautiful popular girl and they don't have anything in common yet somehow they get drawn to each other because the popular girl in most of these shows like that usually don't want the person that everybody's sworn in over them. everybody's just like oh my gosh she's popular everybody like them. but they don't actually see the real side of them whereas you say these loser loser guys is not really paying attention to them they usually give them more understanding. They don't just see them for their popularity. They don't just see them for their beauty and everything such as that. They see, they actually see them for who they are as a person. Because they're like, yeah, you're beautiful. But me as a loser, loner, everybody's, everybody's out of my league. So yes, you're out of my league. But I see you as every other beautiful, stereotypical, popular girl. So he sees her for what she truly is. And so I love these um, romance ones. And this is probably going to be one of my favorites to watch this season. Next up, we have the Ice Blade Sorcerer shall rule the world. So this is another school fantasy action packed one. The Ice Blade Sorcerer is held as the most powerful sorcerer in the world. The one who inherited the title, Ray White, our, our main character, struggles to deal with his own immense power. After fighting in the Far East War, his last accomplishment, he vanished from the fat battlefield along with deeply scarred Scythe. Three years have passed since then, and Ray enrolled in this Academy of Magic, a school attended by all the elite sorcerers of the world. Ray is the first ordinary to attend this academy since it's been founded. So he's greeted by looks of scorn and a content. So you can already see how this goes. He's like, he's a he's a war hero, so he's already super powerful. He comes to this super noble elite school. Everybody's looking at him like, ah. You got a basic kind of plane, my G. You're not, you, you're not stepping up like us. And they, you know, they 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 gonna look at him with disgust and everything, but he's gonna be like, hold up. <laughs> you know how you know how these shows go. I'm really hiding my power, but I'm the strongest in this school. I'm stronger than the professors. If I really wanted to show you, if I really wanted to show who, who I was, y'all see I'm on another level. And you know, there's always gonna be situations where he's like, oh, a situation's gonna happen. You know, the school, shady stuff's going to happen. People going to randomly attack the school. And he's going out to show, you know, put the carry jacket on, show these people who he really is and be like, hey, 
I'm really that guy. And they, you know, they people be like, oh, that was lucky. Only a couple people gonna see him, he's gonna go back in the hiding. Then he come back out there, <laughs> I'm that guy. And then eventually he's gonna keep going until people figure out who he is. That those stories are always interesting to me. I love the ones where they act weak, but they're really strong. I just I just like those, I like that category. I prefer the ones where they're actually weak and they eventually get strong through all the training and like setbacks, but one that's already strong and just pretend to be weak, I can vibe with those two. Next up is Tokyo Revengers, the Christmas showdown art. Now, this one's gonna be hard for me to watch. I'm not gonna lie to you. So the thing with me and Tokyo Revengers is I'm not gonna show y'all any spoilers. However, I, I I read this manga and I when the show first dropped, and I read a lot of the manga, and I'm talking about a lot, I called the way up. And then I was, it got repetitive to me. As y'all see, if y'all watch the anime where he keeps going back in time, then he goes back to the future, then he comes back in time, and he cries, he fights, he gets stronger, he goes back to the future, then go back in time because he messed something else up, then go back to the future, then he messed something else up because he changed the future, and he's trying to find the right future, and he can't get it right. It just got repetitive to me, honestly, and then it kind of lost interest. I kind of lost interest in it. So hopefully, Tokyo Revenger is coming back for right now. This Christmas show now. Hopefully, this brings me back to my love for Tokyo Revenger because I really loved the show and the series and the manga in the beginning, but eventually just got worn down with it. So hopefully, this comes back. Next is hey, next is the one I've been ready for. Don't toy with me, Miss Nagatoro. Second attack. Now this one. Bruh, bruh, bruh. Yeah, yeah. If y'all like these kind of like the Sudere, the rom com slice of life, super funny, hint of edgy, like where they hint at that stuff, like kind of like Uza Ch- Uzaki Chan, like that. You, if you like those, you're gonna love this one. This was when this dropped originally. This is my favorite one. I'm caught up all the way to the manga to the point where man, it's just it's just lit right now in the manga. I can't wait for the next chapter to drop. Trust me, you don't want to miss my girl Nagatoro messing with Senpai, her friends messing with Senpai, their relationship slowly growing together. We're starting to finally make some progress, bruh. We're finally making some progress. So you don't want to miss out on the progress being made. Because season one, the progress wasn't really getting there. Season two, it will get there. So make sure to tune into this one. Next up, we have the magical revolution of the reincarnated princess and the genius young lady. So you have this noble woman. She's unjustly stripped of all her title as the kingdom's next monarch. The um, buffoonish princess takes it upon herself to right this wrong, despite being taken for a fool because of her silly antics. Um, she's a magical genius, and she has a plan to help um, what's called the, the noble woman regain her good name. But Little do they know, their encounter will alter the kingdom and the entire world. So you have a reincarnated princess and a magical genius who likes to play around, likes to joke around, everything like that. And you're gonna see how that goes. And I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty interested to see how this one goes. It is girl love. So if you love you some shoju, some girl love, this will be the one for you. Next up, the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world. You can't ha- be happy if you're just strong, even if you're the strongest exorcist in the world. So you have our main character who's called an unrivaled genius, and he's betrayed by the imperial court and about to die. Resolving to be happy in his next life, he uses a secret reincarnation technique he created and reincarnates into another world, and so he receives a new name and a new life. What I lacked in my previous life was cunning. And in this life, I'll be more calculating and find happiness. With the strongest exorcist techniques and strong demons working with him, what lies ahead for our new main character? I am interested to see this because usually you have main character reincarnated to another world, but they're not reincarnated to similar worlds. You have people re- like coming from Earth and they're reincarnated into a magical world. So they have no nothing to base it off of. Or you have people getting reincarnated into a world they were already in. Like, like we were talking about earlier with the misfit demon key, they were already in that world. So they're already overpowered. They already know the rules of the world and you go there. I'm interested to see, but they, but usually those, they don't change their, they're still the same. They act the same. 
even though they're in a new world. I'm interested to see one like this where you get reincarnated into another world. However, you're like, I got to be strategic with how I go about like this because I got betrayed and I got done wrong in my last world. So I got to be strategic in how I move to make sure I don't get done dirty again. So this is one I'm going to be on the lookout for and I'm ready. I think this is going to be one of the ones I, I try to watch um, early on. I think this is going to be a week three one because I want to make sure I give it enough episodes so I can review it properly. This is one of the ones I'm, I'm really excited for. Next up, we have Farming in Another Life. So, you know, we got it. It's Issa guys. It's Issa guys and Slice of Lies. Two of my favorite genres outside of rom-coms is sports. I love me an East Sky and I love me a slice of life. So, you know, this season is for your boy. Cause you see, there's going to be a lot of slice of life, which means I'm going to be happy. So his life is cut short by illness at the age of 39. And the main character knows not to take blessings for granted. When a godlike figure gives him a second chance, he's like, Hey, only thing I want is to be healthy and live peacefully. So they're like, Hey, we can do that. We can do that. So he's like, okay, I'm just going to sit here on my farm, chilling, live a good life, be peaceful and not bother nobody. Let, let, let me live my life. We had a farming anime last season, but that farming anime, he was a little overpowered. He did a little action stuff because he was so strong. This one looks like you taking away the action part. And this is what I would actually prefer him literally just living his peaceful life. This is what our last main character wanted to do. Live a peaceful life farming. You know he's going to have a harem around him eventually. Just people of the local females around him. And they're just going to be like, hey, he's strong. He's, he's doing certain things like that. He, he's going to be a genius in magic. He's going to have other things that attract people to him. But he's just going to be living his simple life. And I can't wait to see how that goes out. Next up is one I've seen a lot of people really excited for, and that is Spy Classroom. You know, Conflict Ravage Nation is now deployed convert, what's called covert, operatives instead of missiles. Lily is recruited into spy training, but her practical skills are absolutely abysmal. Desperate to pass, she leaps at the chance to join a mysterious team. Too bad the team is filled with even more hopeless spies. Together, they must conquer the impossible mission and best their genius and structure. But the true purpose behind their classroom is more hiring than they can even imagine. So it sounds like a little bit a spy classroom mixed with um assassination classroom. That's what I'm peeping up. Don't, don't quote me. That's what I'm peeping with. But I've seen a lot of people excited for them. They said this was really good. And they can't wait for this one. So I'm definitely going to be peeping this. I can't wait to get my review on this one either. Because you got to remember, these are ones I haven't seen either. Usually there, you know, there's some anime and there's some manga that I've already read the mangas to. Even I'm just excited that they're dropping. Like next season, we're going to see Hill's Paradise and stuff like that. Ones that I'm already reading and paying attention to so I can give you all a more thorough review but right now we're just we're just speculating we're speculating what's going to be all looking at the cover looking at the description we're just guessing and so when we get there we get there i can't wait for it either and then we have inspectra season two so i didn't watch season one i didn't it's usually not my cup of tea it's not my cup of tea because i usually don't like the supernatural ones or the mystery like they they usually i get lost in them i'm not gonna lie to you however this one I heard her a little romance. I heard it was a romance too at the same time. So since we are doing our seven weeks of anime, we need the top, we need to fill up the top seven anime. So I was like, I haven't peeped this one yet. So we're gonna add it to the list. We're gonna pop that one in, and I can't wait for that one. Next up is Bung Bungo Stray Dog season four. Season one, two, three, they're amazing. If you haven't watched them, watch them now so that you're ready for season four. If you haven't, I gotta I, I gotta go back and watch some of season three myself because it's been so long, I have forgotten a lot. I've watched hundreds of animes in between that time. So my brain is kind of fried from it, so I'm gonna have to go back and peep some of it. But I did thoroughly enjoy this one, and so I definitely recommend you to go watch it. Since it's a season four, I'm not gonna give you too much of an analysis because it's, it's, it's already been going on for a while. So... If you haven't tried it, give Bungo uh, Stray Dog Season 1 a try. If you don't like it, it is what it is. But if you are a fan of it, you already know why we're excited for it. Next is another new anime, Chilling in My 30s After Getting Fired from the Demon King's Army. 
So we have one. We've we've seen these like before. Like usually they're not leaving the Demon King's army. They're usually leaving the hero parties. So you see they're leaving the hero parties because people are like, oh, you're too weak. You're not strong enough. You're not. You can't. You're holding us back. But then it turns out they're actually super OC, and they were just either using, getting used wrong. They didn't know their true strength, everything like that. And they start developing, and understanding their true strength, understanding that they actually are really possible. I mean, really, really powerful. So this is how this was going to go, except for instead of leaving the hero's party, you're going to be leaving the Demon King's army. So it should be interesting. You already kind of know the story because it's happened multiple times, but still, nonetheless, it should be interesting. We still have quite a few anime to go through, so we're going to take a break, and then we will be right back. Yeah, I've been here, 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 I've been here,